everyone uh, uh, let me introduce uh, one of my uh, uh, truthful honest subscribers uh, who is an american or semi american uh, <laughs> is from india and uh, he will ask questions and uh, he will speak and share his uh, personal experiences especially on the observations uh, that he did on the um, f1 and h1b yeah please introduce yourself Sure. Yes. I mean, I'm Sai. Um, you know, I just completed my master's in information technology. Uh, completed my uh, undergraduate here in the United States as well. Uh, you know, just looking because you know, right now the graduation season begins. What do I do? You know, but that you know, I'm in that dilemma right now. Okay. Uh, when did you come to US? Uh, I came here when I was two years old, oh. and now I'm 23 or 24. I don't even know the number, but something like that. So almost uh, you spent two decades in US, right? Uh, yeah, almost I spent two decades on in, in the US, and you know, it's unfortunate. I, you know, I, you know, it's unfortunate, but it is what it is. Okay. So how do you feel? Uh, I mean, maybe two years. It is too young and too early to you know about America and all. But when do you realize that uh, you are in America? I mean, the real life in America starts at what age, or in which period? I think you... for me, the realization, yeah, yeah. So I mean, the realization for me kicked in when my when we had to move back to India because our visa expired, and I was like, oh shit, oh. you know. So I I to the value I guess of. So basically, you know, we have something. Basically, your parents were on F one or H one B visa, right? If I'm correct. H yeah yeah. Okay, so then moved back to India. How long you stayed in India? I stayed there, so I was there uh, for about one and a half year. Okay, your English for accent one and a half year. is completely Americanized. And uh, how do you feel life in <laughs> India? Then that one and a half year during that one and a half year. I mean, the first six months were horrific. You know, the first six months were really bad. Uh, but after that, you know, I slowly started adjusting. You know, kind of started watching the local movies, this that, and all that. But the first six months were terrible because it was like, oh, you know, what do I do now? It's like because when I moved there, what had happened was I completed, uh, you know, part of my high school here. Mm. So they're like, well, wait a minute, you know, your high school credits don't work here. You have to start from the eleventh grade. So because of that, the one thing why I was very upset about is I lost one year in the process. Oh, like my yeah. my education got you know my education got messed up in the in the process. You know. Yeah, got it. So you. You you moved back when you were in the eleventh grade, right? Exactly. Exactly. That is exactly. Uh, that is very tough time. I mean, that is what uh, currently all the H one Bs who are living here, approximately three three million numbers, they mm -hmm. face their children are going to face the same problem if they want to go mm -hmm. back. Uh, the the children of H one Bs who are in tenth grade. Will never fit in mm -hmm. Indian education system because I went there. I quit life in America several times. Uh, maybe you are following my mm -hmm. videos, right? Thanks for following. And uh, I am. I am. I really like the videos, Kumar. You know, every time yeah. I'm depressed, every time I'm upset, I go to the videos. Yeah. Believe me, they help me out. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Thank you for some say some haters, right? Like uh, your videos are depressing, like that. No. They, they look. Look. The haters are always gonna hate the truth. The yes. truth is always sour. You know. It's not sweet. That's why it's called the truth. Yeah. Right. Okay. Then now coming to the next question. Uh, again, uh, when did you come back to uh, US? I mean, after one yeah. of year, eleventh grade and twelfth grade, did you complete in India? Yeah, yeah. So what I did is I went there. I completed that over there, and then as I was there, I had to write what was called the SAT mm -hmm. to come back and come back on an F1 visa as a student. Exactly. Appreciate it. Yep. Cool. Sure. Yeah. So I mean, the air conditioner in my apartment is broken. So you know, the maintenance guy is you know oh, fixing okay. that. Yeah. yeah. So that's why. But yeah, Kumar, you know, you know, after after finishing that, because you know, I discovered that you know there was nothing there for me in India because it, it the way of life, you know, it would it would have been it would have been it would have been a, been a, been a tight, you know, especially given that I've seen the life here, it's very hard over there. Now had I now I will say this when I saw that when I went back I was like I wish I never saw I I wish I never saw this because then I wouldn't have had a tough time there. Yeah. You know, but under tough, I'll you know, I obligated myself to come back because the only for only for me to sustain was to be was to come back on an F one, yeah. and then you know continue education, right? 
Yeah, actually, uh, I spent uh, 35 years in India, then I spent mm-hmm. 10 years in uh, US. So I know mm-hmm. how the life uh, differences between India and the US. I can adjust there if I go back tomorrow, mm-hmm. uh, but mm-hmm. why not be my children? Because uh, the systems here is totally different, right? Mm-hmm. Compared mm-hmm. to mm-hmm. India. Yeah, it is very tough uh, uh, to adjust in India because I talked to a couple of uh, U.S. citizens who return green card and uh, H-1Bs, their children unable to adjust there, even it is five years uh, after they relocate mm-hmm. also, because of mm-hmm. the mm-hmm. by heart system, education, whatever. Yeah, 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 yeah. And you know, when we were here, when we were here, you know, uh, plenty of my, plenty of my parents' colleagues, you know, knowing they didn't know when they were going to go back to India or not, but when they were here, what they did is they brought some of the textbooks from the Indian education system because they would study that on the side in case unpredictably, you know, in, yeah. in, in an unfortunate situation that in return, they need to, they need to have a second language of a Hindi or, you know, something like that. So they would keep up with that on the side as well. Yeah, it's very tough. And, uh, yeah. and each state in India have a different uh, language, uh, uh, regional language that is secondary, mandatory secondary yeah. language uh, to stay there. Unless you admit in international mm-hmm. schools mm-hmm. where fees are abnormally high, there you can uh, choose French yeah, or yeah, something because, you else. Know, education in India is a business, right? If yeah. I had a wish, I wish I owned a school in India. Yeah. You know. Yeah. But I studied in government schools and uh, government college. Mine is different uh, experience mm-hmm. from the current generation who are in, studying in corporate. Okay, mm-hmm. then mm-hmm. when you come back, you came on F1 visa. For, That's correct. For a B.Tech uh, undergraduation. No, 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 no. So what happened is, you know, when I came back on F1 visa, I joined a, a business management program. Yeah. So when I got a conversation, when I got into a conversation with my immigration lawyer, my immigration lawyer told me that the only way that you would be able to remain or increase your odds of staying in the United States yeah. was to get was to choose a STEM field of study. Okay. So in the process, I killed my passion for business and marketing and all that, and then I chose IT. And even I was warned by my parents not to choose IT. IT is a rigged field. That's that's what I was yeah. told. But against all everybody's wishes, you know, against my own passion and my heart, I chose IT only because only because they said if you're in a STEM degree, your your odds are not going to be completely in your favor, but they're going to be a little better than what it, what they would have been if you had a business degree. Yeah, yeah, you know? I got it. Even uh, my American, some of my American subscribers from uh, Illinois, they called me and uh, spoke to me for uh, one hour on last weekend and he said, Kumar, I advise your children not to enter IT, information mm-hmm. technology. So mm-hmm. knowing mm-hmm. all the corruption and crime going on. It is, yeah. yeah. Okay, so uh, you complete, have you completed your undergraduation? That is B. Yeah, I have. Yeah, I have. Yeah, it's, yeah, I have. So I completed you, with flying colors, but you know, there's no difference here whether you pass it with flying colors or whether you barely pass the job markets. You know, it's not, it's not very favorable for new graduates, yeah. whether they're citizens or not. You know. Yeah, I'm coming to that part. And uh, how, how did you manage your financial um, loans or expenditure for your B Tech? Yeah, so I mean, I didn't have any loans, you know, fortunately, you know, my parents were able to pay all that. I had no loans and not only that, because of my exceptional SAT score, they even gave me a scholarship. So okay. I, I, there, there was no, there wasn't any loan or anything like that. It was all personal finance. Oh, okay. Okay. Uh, how do you find, uh, I mean, the undergraduation course, four years, you, it's, it's spent just like that or uh, well, well, yeah, I mean, there have been some ups and downs, Kumar, because, you know, mm. in the undergraduate, what happens is, you know, they, they teach you some stuff that really, you know, the jobs don't require. They teach you 80% of the stuff that, that's taught in the undergraduate degree, the jobs don't require. Mm. And, you know, I paid thousands of dollars for it. Not only that, so a part of the graduation requirement was to complete a set of internships, uh, an X number of internships. But in order to get the internships, what happens is if a person like me, who's not a U.S. citizen or green card, goes up, they say, do you now or in the future require work a visa sponsorship you know yeah. that's you know i'd rather jump off a building than answer that question because that's a slap in the face for me given that <laughs> i've lived here so long and you know through depression through anxiety and all that somehow i was able to get through you know find some employers here you know do all that but that was the tough part the tough part was completing the internships yeah so still you're on f1 visa right that's that's correct that's so, correct 
uh, when you join the btech your first year you, your dreams and uh, blood might be boiling and your dreams are uh, very high but now at the end of it when you start searching for jobs jobs i mean how do you feel uh, I feel like I I feel like crap. I feel like I never should have went to college. You know, college is in my opinion is the biggest scam in no, no. mankind because what's happening is you have these schools here that that will take pictures from all odd angles and they will put it on a magazine and then they'll put some company logos on a magazine. They'll say here, come here. But when I come here, I found out that you know there's a large gap between the private sector and the colleges in terms of you know what skills. a college graduate must have in order to get a job right yeah. so 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 you know there's a wide disconnect between companies and colleges yeah very and, you know you raise a very good point like there is a bridge, there is a huge gap or bridge that is never mm-hmm. filled between the industry and uh, education exactly right? exactly and, exactly uh, and you know with IT you know how it is what you learn in the first year that technology is no longer in 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 function when yeah. you graduate whatever you, you are learning in college is 10 years old or uh, 20 years yeah. old You know, I give an example. Watch in the first semester, they were, you know, in the first few years, they were like ASP, .NET, web forms. Who uses web forms? No one does that anymore. So web applications for, you know, Angular or React or Vue. No one does that. So yeah, few of my uh, colleagues or friends, they ask advice. Kumar, I mean, uh, uh, database or application support or something else. Uh, what do you suggest? I always say like, mm-hmm. if you if you don't know AWS, if you don't know Azure. If you don't know cloud, <laughs> Google Cloud, at least three clouds, one database <laughs> and uh, one uh, long base, one operating system, networking. If you don't know this, then you are out of market. So if this is not, you are, yeah, you are. If this is not, uh, sorry, if this is not teaching at uh, college or university, then college and university is outdated. It, it is, it, it is, and the other, and the other point I like to make, Kumar, is you know, I don't. I think colleges are very successful in teaching this because let's imagine, for example, a candidate who's very well versed with the cloud and backend and frontend. Why the hell would you teach at a college where you go make all the money you want in industry? Why would you come teach? <laughs> yeah, correct, correct. You know, what is your message for uh, uh, parents in India and across the globe watching this video? Because I receive emails from parents of uh, intermediate students, that is, to eleventh and twelfth grade. Uh, mm-hmm. from india they say we want to send my children for btech uh, to america a uh, lot of hype maybe america or media has created so they are thinking that studying btech here on f1 is something great than ms so what do you advise uh, you need to give two advice one for uh, parents who are child, child, who are about to send their children for btech in america and the second ms in uh, MS or MBA in uh, ESA. What are your advices? Yeah, I mean, my advice would be my advice would be this. Listen, put all the hype aside, right? My advice is, you know, first of all, I'll tell you what. When I was in India, I applied through an educational vendor, mm-hmm. right? Uh, you know, they kind of uh, they decide your future. You know, they decide where you go. You know, they kind of sway your influence on which university you should go to, which university you shouldn't go to. It all depends on the commissions yeah. that they make on the back end. My advice is this: if 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 you are a prospective student looking to come to the United States, I would really I would really sit back and really think about should I really do it or not. Because I tell you why: if you want to come here, come here, but you better be ready to leave as soon as your education is over. If that's not the case, don't come here. If you want to come here, be prepared to exit the country once you get your degree. And by the way, when you come here on an F1 visa, that's part of the rules and regulations. Is once you complete your education, you have to go back. Right. Yes, in, like in, in uh, Germany and other countries, right? Study and get out. Study and get out. You know, study and get out. Not only this, if you don't want to get out, you will, you will be indirectly you will be sent out because no one's gonna hire you. Know, ain't nobody gonna do nothing because the issue here is a lot of people that they come here. You know, they come here, they bring loans, they bring the excuses. They say, oh, I have a loan. Now I have to stay back to cure the loan or you know to 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 pay the loan off. You know, whatever this that and all that. My advice would be, you know, stay in India as long as you can. Get five, six, maybe five to six years work experience. Because when I first came here, the minimum was two. Every year it went up three, four, five, six, seven years. Like my advice would be get to get as much work experience as you can. Because 
the other the other advice that I would give is, you know, when you, when when you get work experience, the classes that they're teaching you, the content that they're teaching you, you could tell if something's shit or something's worth it, right? Because they teach you a lot of shit. Hmm. If you have work experience, you could say, oh, this technology is outdated. I don't yeah. have to pay attention in yes. that class. But whereas this is, you know, for example, AWS, you really want to pay attention in that class versus this class. But whatever it is, if you're coming here, you know, I would prepare. I would be very prepared to go back as soon as the education is done. If that's not the case, don't come here. Please don't come here. Yeah. You know. Yeah, correct. Uh, I understand your pain, and it's really a truthful message. But I'm not sure uh, how many viewers will understand because when we speak truth, it it cuts the truth of truth of the listeners of viewers sometimes. <laughs> It's, uh, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Because always educational consultancies, brokers, middlemen, people mm-hmm. here, they tell, come, 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 and uh, uh, they tell, yeah, they don't yeah. speak the reality. Go to America, you will they become millionaire. Yeah. That is what in India, educational consultancies, and Indians who arrived mm-hmm. in the past is the uh, thing that they are uh, doing. Out of mm-hmm. maybe one out of 10,000 might get a job without faking, right? Mm-hmm. What about, uh, did you observe any... Uh, in your walks of life in America, did you notice a different kinds of non-immigrant work status guys at work locations enter the jobs? Uh, because your English and my English accent is different, right? I cannot imitate or uh, change my accent in overnight. Mm-hmm. Uh, my accent is my accent. But uh, did you notice uh, people enter jobs by faking experience? Because in the email you mentioned. Uh, industry demands five years experience and uh, no freshers are hired but if you see at a uh, job locations all freshers are hired right how is it mm-hmm. possible oh uh, well the locations that i worked at i have never come across any direct evidence of such cases uh but you know th- thinking about that right now yeah maybe one or two people you know who probably have you know I'm not going to say fake, but who have probably misrepresented, misrepresented yeah. their past experience just so they could get a leg up in the recruitment process. Yeah. Kind of does. And, you know, the, the way you kind of spot these people, and, you know, I've only seen like one or two because, you know, I haven't seen much. I'll be, I'll be honest. I haven't seen much in the area that I've been I, that I've been in. But these are people who usually come in, contractors. You know, they're, they're not full-time students. You know, they come in as a contractor. You know, the employer really says, hey, you know, we don't want to convert you into full-time, but you can stay as long as you have a project. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, these people are, you know, I, you know, I mean, listen, if you have the stuff, you're confident. If you don't have the stuff, faking it is much harder than, you know, yeah. anything else. It's really, you need to have a real great talent to fake it. Believe yeah. me, it's not easy. So, yeah, right you know? now you're working directly to American client or any vendors are there in between you and the client, end client. Right now, right now, what I'm doing is I'm still looking for jobs. Oh. I'm not, yeah, I'm, I'm unemployed right now. I'm currently unemployed. Uh, but I'm still looking for jobs. I hear from recruiters every now and then, and, you know, LinkedIn has been... They will big... ask, who is your employer? Send me your passport number, H-1B copy, F-1 copy, or OPT copy, driving license, yeah, yeah, all that, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So do you... Yeah, yeah, you... I've, I've... Okay. Go ahead. Do you watch my videos regularly? Yeah, yeah, I because, do. Uh, I do. I interviewed recently some recruiters, and uh, they don't want to appear on videos, but they shared a lot of content. Uh, what's mm-hmm. happening in India? They, for example, a student on F1, they send, uh, they collect H1B driving license copies from me. Example, I'm giving. They mm-hmm. change the name as Ravi Subbara or something, and then they send intern back to people on <laughs> F1 in America and uh, this is what happening one side uh, 50 per some percentage of recruiters are genuine rest of it mm-hmm. are uh, faking and giving forged documents to international yeah. students like you mm-hmm. for yeah, example I mean, a job needs a US citizen they produce fake US citizenship card oh dang okay uh, wow fake oh, green dang. card like that. whatever you ask uh-huh. they will give Oh dang! That's yeah. That's on another level. <laughs> that's on another level because the only fake or the only shit that I've seen is I've been getting calls every now and then. Recruiters will say, "Hey, we wanna we wanna enhance your resume." <laughs> yeah, enhance. <laughs> and they call it they call that a resume enhancement. But some They'll American say, uh, recruiters, uh, I interviewed several people and uh, placing the information. But some international students from India who come for MS and MBA. 
they mm-hmm. misunderstand and they target me they are thinking that i am on h1 i am only targeting f1 what is that is their ignorance but uh, recruiters mm. americans told some of them once for example they take one resume they don't let you allow you to make any changes the resume exactly. stays in their database and they cross check if exactly. they fa- if you fa- 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 know yeah. they it is fake they will never accept your resume like ntt yeah. data uh, modis k force but some they allow the uh, not entire faking it some uh, bits and pieces to add to to satisfy the client requirement exactly 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 i mean listen you know i mean i, I, I think it's it's just bad because what's happening is you know you got you got plenty of f1 students here who are trying to get a job the genuine you know the genuine way the legal way the right way but they're not able to do it because the market is flooded with misrepresented information yeah lot right? of information yeah misrepresented information you know one person has you know 10 20 30 you know 30 resumes this that and all that you know I've known I've come across cases we know you people you know what they do is you know they're willing to stoop down to any level just to get the project right and it sucks it really does but but also you know the the, the other what I what I want to kind of talk about Kamara is you know Yeah, you know these people are, you know, faking it this that, and all that. But really, you know, if you think about it, genuinely if you try to get a job, you know, what are the odds that you get a job genuinely? You know, if if you come in, you know, put in what you did, I don't know if the person has a shot. Mm-hmm. So, I mean, could, could that be a reason why that they're faking it? I don't know, but I but I do, you know, I I'm not a fan of faking it. But, you know, I I, I don't know what to say. You know, it's like you know, there there are a lot of people who come here and, you know, they put a lot of stuff and nonsense on their resume, you know, for example, you know, code is singular it's not plural they say codes I'm like what the hell is codes i believe people uh, uh, what the hell is code yeah they put xml on their resume i'm like why the fuck are you putting xml xml is not that xml is a data exchange format there's nothing cool about that yeah they'll say codes i i wrote codes i'm like what's codes you know yeah. and then you could quickly spy and say oh you know this guy's a phony you know there is americans i saw it's only one page resume but whereas indians it should be 7 to 8 pages <laughs> local 10 years experience this is what the indians who arrived in the past who got green cards and uh, us citizens they made this standard in the market if your resume is not 7 pages if it doesn't have local 10 years experience they don't even consider that you are from america Oh shit. So you okay. come you came to America in 2016 example but still your right. resume has to speak 10 years. Yeah. So that's how they do it in uh, guest houses they rent a houses they keep 25 to 50 mm. members um, international students yeah. and then uh, do all kind of mischievous things and mm. uh, it is not students fault it is the owners fault. Yeah, yeah, and, yeah, uh, yeah. and their interviews attended by someone else they enable yeah, yeah, for yeah. uh, voice modulators also available it seems because female yeah. voice is high demand now they pay oh, $1000 and uh, they go to uh, at work locations i see right they go to restrooms they uh, they take a whatsapp whatsapp you know right uh, one yeah, app, yeah. app they uh, take a screens they send it to someone else in india who support a proxy support they install team viewer screen sharing software they share the yeah client them, yeah. oh my god all this they have to do it still they get 3000 dollars a month <laughs> yeah yeah which is which is shit you know because you know they, this is what it is kumar you know i mm. think uh, you know my one possible solution for this to be would, would be to you know end the h1b visa for anybody who's not a full time meaning if, yeah. if 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 you're working as a contractor you know that's not there's not a real need i think if that's the case they should come here on an l1 and then you know just work you know the first 6 7 months come here on a short term contract and leave you know l1 i don't know why yeah. l1 Logan. is again intercompany transfer not possible for all i mean uh, unless you stand out from the crowd in the indian companies or mncs so they will be sent to on site so mm-hmm. the mm-hmm. people who are not recruited like if you visit engineering colleges in south india it's like a poultry farms every street and you will have <laughs> yeah, a, a, yeah not my statement the honorable chief minister from telangana mr kcr told yeah, yeah in colleges yeah, yeah. are poultry farms and yeah, yeah. Uh, some uh, interview who my interview they said that it's called a jerax mission like you <laughs> copy paste in exams right mm-hmm, mm-hmm. 
so that is the kind of uh, low standard education so those who are yeah. not selected in the campus placement they stopped and outsourcing companies like tcs whatever infosys so yeah. they they will be uh, working in uh, small firms uh, then finally they have to come to f1 ms or mba that is the way mm-hmm. out if they get a job in uh, mens they don't look for ms right No I mean well, I mean I've heard the cases but I've also heard the cases where hey you know 28 to 30000 rupees is not going to do it I want dollars uh, yeah I'm, that is a second category like I mean I've heard <laughs> see even uh, I've heard all admit, kinds of cases admit when I, I got uh, my student visa refused and when I was start working supporting on site I was thinking that oh if I go to on site I will become rich you know one year I, two years I can earn lot but last one year two years I see lot of layers illegal layers seven people share h1b salary is here so what oh, do you get nothing nothing you might so just stay back and in india people blame kumar but they have to blame the seven people and the systems right and the seven yeah, people are yeah. sharing money and they don't give money everything is h1b they push everything on h1b the system is yeah. so uh, yeah, i don't know what to everything. call yeah So did you Correct. talk to President Trump? You know, uh, I've you tried. Know? You know, I've tried. I've yeah. tried to talk to him. You know, I wrote to him. I was like, "Hey, you know, here's my case. You know, what do you want me to do?" Mm. What did they you say? Know, I mean, mean, they will listen to you. I mean, when you when the email you mentioned, you called uh, uh, President Trump administration, and they listened to your voice. They did. They did. You know, they we had a great conversation. You know, I, th- I think the president is doing great things for the country. We had a great conversation. So you know, what their advice was, you know, their advice was listen. You know, uh, the country accepted this thing called the work visa, and your best bet in order to increase your chances of remaining in the country would be to get find an employer. You know, would be willing to sponsor you. Hmm. The twenty thousand actually, honestly, H one B somewhere uh, employment program, but uh, it is uh, now pimping business like a. You get your project, I give salary. That is the concept mm-hmm. now, unless mm-hmm. absorbed by client full time. Uh, mm-hmm. And instead, like in UK, they have to give a work permit directly without any broker. Second, uh, mm-hmm. is work permit has to be given preference for local B techs, right? Local mm-hmm. citizens. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Second, yeah. people like you, third, who come mm-hmm. for MS and MBA. I don't say all are intelligent, but only the ten percent or twenty percent. whoever qualified to get a work permit instead mm-hmm. of lottery system should be given and rest ask them to get out right yeah yeah i completely agree you know i completely and, agree because uh, stop h1 bs for outsourcing companies also mm-hmm. Like, mm-hmm. maximum cut is currently going to them yeah yeah i wish i owned one of those companies <laughs> yeah they, they work <laughs> lot of hours but no ot and a uh, mm-hmm. lot of things are there so yeah How is work culture, American work culture? I mean, I have no complaints about it. Yeah, you, I've never seen the Indian work culture, nor do I want to see it. You know, you but work, uh, you know, you, go ahead. Did you work already or had to start working? No, no, I worked. I worked. Uh-huh. I worked for a couple companies here. I worked for a couple companies here. Um, I worked mainly as a software engineer. Yeah. Uh, for well over you know three years so mm-hmm. far, I worked and you know I enjoyed it. You know, there's some things that I No, that, that that I don't like, but you know, there's a lot of things to like. Yeah. So you know, I I have no complaints about it, and I was you know mostly under you know you know I didn't come through as a contract. I was just a full time oh, at the place. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, that's what I mean. Very good to know. I mean, any suggestions for uh, people watching this video from U.S. government side, like U.S.C.S. or attorneys or. want to bring change in the system what is your message yeah i mean my message would be you know listen i mean you got to do whatever you can to fix the fix the rules you know fix the system because you know obviously the system right now is broken you know you have a lot of people who really don't who really you know i, I really feel like you know they're qualified americans who can do the job but then you know they're hiring people who are not americans to do the job And that really goes against the higher American, buy American rule. You know, I'm thankful for this president. Um, if if anybody can fix it, mm. I I think Trump can really fix it. You know, he's the only one that can fix it. 
Uh, but my message would be, you know, you know, to really solve this problem, you know, I, I think what I would do is I would deny the H1 visa to whoever is working on a contract. So unless it's unless it's a full time with the, the employer, yeah. deny it. Otherwise, deny it. Okay. Unless it's a full time with the, with the employer, deny it. Otherwise, don't because you know that's just saying, hey, you know, there's some temporary work. Go here, go here, go here. You know, yeah. find this project here, this, that, and all that. So I, I would, I would completely deny it. You know, unless it's a full time. And on the same, and on, and on the same uh, thing, you know, as far as the companies, you know, the companies also need to, you know, kind of um, hire more fresh graduates and give them a chance because, because what happens is if they're giving them the chance, the fakes hmm. come down in number, right? Because then why would there be a need, need to fake it? Yeah, exactly. Why? An American also wrote to me, why don't they hire Americans first? They should. They should hire Americans Then they can first. avoid this fake, right? Yeah, they can. That yeah, they can. And they're a lot. Believe me, they're a lot. Yeah. It, but there are also genuine people there. I've seen very extremely smart people too. Very smart people from that I've come across here. The articles I read and the, from the information I received, 76% of local B.Tech graduates are unemployed. Like even yeah. B.Tech computer studied locally still working in Starbucks and other coffee yeah. shops. Yeah. Is it true? Yeah. I've seen some people, you know, I, I tell you what, I, you know, one of my roommates, after he graduated, he was laying carpet. He couldn't find a job. American, you know, he's an American. Mm-hmm. He couldn't find a job. I think that's very wrong. You know, he's a very talented person. As you can see right here in the back, you know, the yeah. project that we made, the poster in the back. But, uh, you know, very talented people, you know, they're unable to find employment because, you know, I feel like a lot of the students here who come in on an F1 visa? They come here. They come here on an on, on an electrical engineering. They switch to computer science, and then they'll and and then what they'll do is uh, they'll delay their thesis until they find a job. You know, they'll get into another degree. You know, whatever whatever they need to do to extend their stay in the United States, they will. I saw some videos on the university sites. Some guys did MS and MBA five times. I oh, feel dang. proud to say I don't know what MS they do five times. I am not sure even the richest man children also do a MS five times in the you, you go dumb. You go dumb if you do that. You shouldn't do that. Yeah, it is to say. Hey, hey, hey. And the, and the other thing, and the other thing is, you know, probably the probably the probably USCIS and you know the education issue, They should probably pass a law where you know F1 students are coming in. They can't do the, the same level degree again. Meaning, I'm seeing I'm seeing and I'm reading yeah. a lot of cases where they'll join a second master's degree. So unless they're joining a PhD, deny it. Yeah, Just deny one, it for the second masters. Yeah, second masters is a really scam, and uh, day one CPT is illegal. Like I mean, yeah, they yeah. get uh, from Michigan University. You recently heard right in the news, ICE started yeah. it, and uh, guys working Undercom in California yeah. driving over, working in IT there, but. Uh, uh, like that, 150k Indians are there illegally. 150k. They they gotta get these people out. Yeah. We we have no place for them. They gotta get these people out. Uh, you know. Yeah. Apart from 300k Indians walk from Mexican border to America, that is 300k. Oh, this is 150k, <laughs> and H one B is three million people waiting for green card through body shops yeah. or outsourcing or. Uh, yeah. Yeah. And see all. Uh, the beautiful employment system, they completely messed up. And uh, yesterday one girl talking to me, uh, someone wants to come from Spain on a unique skills on H1. But H1B is only taken away by Indian companies, Indians, and uh, and only for IT, unfortunately. H1B is mm-hmm. meant for all skills, right? Which are not locally mm-hmm. available. Yeah, so the H-1B visa is, is a visa that an employer can use to hire a foreign worker mm. if they are unable to find an American who has the same skills. Yeah. You know? And that could be pharmaceutical, that could be IT. It's mostly IT, mm. you know? According to yeah. you, what is the uh, solution for the problem that you are facing on the people like you, like children of uh, H-1Bs? For example, I am here, or maybe 3 million H-1Bs are here. Uh, you know mm-hmm. the green card for per country quota in India it takes 150 years to get a green card who are uh-huh. currently waiting so for their children have to quit when they get 21 years old yeah so exactly come, exactly I'm in the same so situation what, yeah what is the solution you will give it to government or government has to give a solution yeah you know if the United States government has to solve it you know I think my thing would be my request would be to you know clear the backlog you know mm-hmm. check everybody's records clear the backlog those who are legally and lawfully 
those who have legal and lawful record should remain. Those who don't should leave. Yeah. Uh, but you know, my my advice would be to you know, yeah. you know, to, to to clear the lines. You know, to, to clear the backlogs because you know there's a lot of people I'm hearing. As you, I don't know if you saw the movement, but there was a Dalka movement, not a yeah. Dalka, Dalka, D A L C A. Oh. These people were out here protesting, you know, in front of the White House. They were like, so the L and the DACA and the, the DACA says were legal. And they made a case that, hey, you know, the green, you know, when when we as a family get a green card, my my, my child has to self-deport himself because they're above the, they'll obviously be above the age of 21 by the time they get it. Yeah. So, you know, I, I, I think they should clear it. And, you know, and not only that, you know, I, I think yeah, um, as, as time flies, I think the United States will rely less on foreign workers especially for coding skills if you look at for example apple or amazon or you know whatever they're actually passing a lot of programs starting from first grade where it teaches local united states citizens uh to code and coding is you know there, there's a huge deficit for that skill in the united states so you know, over the years i see uh the united states relying less and less on foreign workers in the h1b visa so i think it'll be a self-cure i think it's just a matter of time but you know i, I would heavily enforce uh, coding education yeah. and make that mandatory instead of the bullshit math classes that they take which are pointless you know yeah. at least if you learn some java you know you learn some swift you could build an iphone app make some money what are you going to do with math mm-hmm. you're not even going to get a professor job because all the great mathematicians out here they're going they got they're, they're going to you know analytics with data scientists and all that you know they're trying to go do that mm-hmm. and also the education system is also rigged you know because i think there's a large disconnect like like i've stated before yeah. between corporations and education systems where what you learned in your freshman year becomes outdated in legacy technology by the time you pass out yeah. and get your degree. Yeah. Uh, you know, it's, it's a busted system. They don't know how to teach, yeah. in my point of view, because it's not practical teaching. Uh, you know, I mean, it's just all theoretical, which really doesn't work because yeah. in the industry, what you have to do is you have to put your 10 fingers down and type, yeah. you know. Before I wrap up, let me add a few points. Uh, happy Easter to you. Today is Easter. Thank you. Yeah, yeah. thank you. It's you not too. called Good Friday. It's called Easter, and uh, that's one. And uh, second, uh, I met couple of uh, students all across the journey. And uh, Maryland, one of my friend Ravi is there in the video. He took me. Yeah, yeah. He's a funny guy. <laughs> a funny guy, Ravi. Uh, he <laughs> argues a, a different uh, angle. That's why my hat or some of them they like it, and he also speak truth like I. And I ask, after 10 years living on H1B, I say, Kumar, what do you want me to do after I go back? He will say, you have to sell peanuts in the uh, Indian <laughs> railway stations. Uh, uh, that's that, yeah. truth. Like, and uh, next point, he took me to Baltimore downtown. Uh, some of the international students, F1 from India who came on a B-Tech Civil, MS Mechanical and Senior Java Architecture. I don't know how they get <laughs> jobs, experience. <laughs> experience and all. They, then he introduces Kumar exclusive. Then they were saying they get pissed off and uh, angry and uh, in the pub. There's, there's no reason to get pissed off. You know, there's no you know these people. These people were putting Java five years, ten years on their on their. They don't even know how to convert a document, a uh, word document file to a PDF. Hmm. How the hell do you know Java if you know that? What if you they... send somebody a resume in a word document file, that's a big no-no because someone can go in and edit. Mm. do secure send it to the pdf some clowns out here they don't even know how to convert a word document to a pdf, PDF. i don't even know if they know how to spell pdf yeah. to begin with but they come here yeah, they, what their argument is i took twenty thousand dollars loan uh, from india my bank <laughs> so i do anything to get back that money that is the argument that they they were doing and most of them they do then i said if you took $20,000 and you fake felony and everything, then what about local p This They took loan of 200 k right? Exactly, exactly. <laughs> for them, you know, for FAFSA, they have to pay back six months, you know, as soon as it starts. Yeah. So, you know, it's, it's a sad situation. These people are coming here, a lot of them with no skills. Some of them are genuine. Some of them, you know, most of them aren't. They come here, they do what they want, you know. And, and not only this, let me tell you this. When they go to the visa interview, they act like, you know, they're the king of India. They go like, you know, mm-hmm. they're the best in the world. They tell all their relatives, I'm going, yeah. you know, they drum, they drum all the way to the visa interview. But when they come here, they work at a freaking gas station and they clean shit yeah. on the tables. I've seen it with my own eyes, you know, so, so it's like their level of pride 
you know, during the Weezer interview, the landing here is much different from when they come here and start school with them. Because when they come here, they start school, they realize, oh, how the hell do I pay rent? How the hell do I pay all the utilities? How do I pay my phone bill, my Spotify music bill? You know, and then they go and they clean stuff. But, you know, what they say in the Visa interview, they say, oh, I'm an M engine, you know, artificial intelligence, or, you know, I'm a, I'm a, you know, I'm a, I'm a material science. Ameri- phony. America needs me like that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But reality is different and uh, projection on the Facebook, social media is also something exactly, different. Exactly. This uh, misrepresentation uh, gives a false hope for uh, many people in India and outside. It does, it does, it does, it does. And it, it is very bad, you know, it's very bad. People, like for example, it's spring now. They take pictures with the flowers, they go, oh, finally it's spring. Like they pretend like they lived here all their life. In India, there's no such thing as spring. I don't think there is, yeah, <laughs> you know, yeah. because of the pollution. None of the plants grow or anyway. Yeah. You know, you put that on social media, people are gonna be there and be like, oh, I'ma come. You know what I'm saying? But you know, it sucks because you know they they're living a two-faced life. Two-faced life and uh, it becomes a status symbol. America mm-hmm. uh, merely becomes a status symbol for many. It does. And a dowry and uh, the real dreamers are get suffered and the local born also victimized, colonized. I think. Yeah. 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 Yes, yeah. Thank you for uh, your valuable time. Almost we had a one hour, 41 minutes conversation. Mm-hmm. And uh, yeah, I'll upload the, when it is ready. And uh, wish you good luck. God bless you. And I okay. hope you will get your uh, sponsorship. Uh, yeah, and if I don't, I'm ready to leave. If I don't, um, I'm ready to leave, by the yeah. way. Because I'm sick of it too. Because, you know. Yeah. I don't, I'm ready. The life tied up here with H1B and once you get H1B it is tied up with an employer for green card for an mm-hmm. uncertain period, right? Until you mm-hmm. get a green card you don't have a freedom or... Uh, you don't? Yeah, you don't. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> thank you. Hi, yep, thank you so much. Yep. Yeah, thank you. Okay. I wish you good luck. I mean, yep. for the rest of the life. God bless you. Mm-hmm. Yep, thank you. Yeah, thank you.